Well, I'm Robert Schock. I have a PhD in geology and geophysics from Yale University. I also have a Master of Science and Master of Philosophy from Yale in geology and geophysics. I did my undergraduate work at George Washington University. I have a Bachelor's of Arts in Anthropology, a Bachelor of Science in Geology, so that's my academic credentials. I have a very strong interest not just in geology but in ancient civilizations and really this is where I've been putting most of my emphasis over the last 20 plus years, working first in Egypt but then moving to really studies around the world, be it Egypt, Peru, Romania, Wales, Turkey, Japan, in particular Turkey in recent years because very exciting discoveries are coming out of Turkey. I've written a number of books addressing these types of topics. My latest book is Forgotten Civilization in which I really summarize over 20 years of research plus my latest findings, my latest research, my latest discoveries. I believe, and we now have firm evidence, that civilization goes back thousands of years earlier than conventional historians and archaeologists have led us to believe. I first began this journey over 20 years ago with my work on the Great Sphinx, redating the body of the Great Sphinx geologically to a period thousands of years earlier than civilization was supposed to exist. People criticized me heavily for that, at least among the academic community. Where was the cooperation? Where was the confirmation? We now have that with the incredible site of Gebekli Tepe, incredibly sophisticated, this site in southeastern Turkey, but more importantly, very, very ancient, well dated to 9 to 10,000 BC at the end of the last ice age. So we now have evidence from the Sphinx from Egypt, from Gebekli Tepe in Turkey, and other evidence around the world that civilization, sophisticated civilization, goes back to this very remote period. But it disappears. It just seems to be wiped off the face of the earth. Why? So this comes to the second aspect of forgotten civilization. What caused these early, very early civilizations to disappear? What brought about their demise? And now I believe we have the solution to this mystery. There were major solar outbursts at the end of the last ice age. They devastated the early civilizations of the time. They brought about cataclysmic changes on Earth. They snapped us out of the ice age. So all kinds of things were happening at that remote period and this really solves the great mystery of these early civilizations, what happened to them. And when you look at the later civilizations, which are not de novo, they don't arise from scratch, they are a reemergence after a long dark age from the beginning, from what was vaguely remembered from that early civilization. And when you put this theory together and you apply it, to many of the mysteries of the ancient world, I think that lots of anomalies, what were anomalies, now fall into place into a comprehensive theory. Geologically, we now have evidence that the Ice Age ended abruptly about 9700 BC, according to what I believe is the best dating. But what is important is not the year or approximate year, but how abrupt it was. It ended within just a couple of years, maybe even literally overnight. So we had dramatic changes in temperature. We had dramatic changes in the glaciers melting. This would have set off earthquakes as pressure was released. It would have set off volcanic activity and destroyed, I believe, the incipient, the early civilizations of that time. And we now have good evidence for those early civilizations. The big question is, what could cause the Ice Age to end so dramatically? I believe that all the evidence now indicates it was a major, major solar outburst. And there are a number of lines of evidence that point to this conclusion. One is detailed studies that have been done of 
ice cores and sediment cores. You can look at isotopes in the sediment cores. You can look at isotopes in the ice cores. You can look at dust layers. All of these indicate that the sun was very, very active at the end of the last ice age. We can get a good proxy, a good indication of how active the sun was because when you have a more active sun, it causes different isotopes to form in the atmosphere. So now we can measure these. This is well proven. So we have very good indication of levels of solar activity. And the sun was much, much more active at the end of the last ice age than it has been or was for thousands and thousands of years later. Other evidence that we have, we have, for instance, vitrification, what is known as ancient vitrification. And I believe some of this ancient vitrification goes back to the end of the last ice age, can be dated to that time period. This was from major solar outbursts, from major what is called electrical plasma. When the sun discharged, it literally would have caused what you could think of as huge bolts of lightning hitting the earth in certain areas, setting fires, causing glaciers to melt, evaporating water, but in some cases such intense heat in certain spots that literally, literally melted the rock and then it would reform as glass. So this is the vitrification process and we see this. So we have good physical evidence of what was happening at the end of the last ice age. Then we have ancient records. So we have ancient records in forms of petroglyphs around the world that Dr. Anthony Parat has been studying. And these are, many of them look sort of like stick figures, human stick figures, but they're not stick figures. And they have very diagnostic characteristics that indicate in his interpretation, he's a plasma physicist with Los Alamos National Laboratory, that these are the same configurations you would see in the sky during a major, major solar outburst. We have not seen anything of this magnitude in historical times. The closest that we have is the Carrington event of 1859 when there was a major solar outburst, but small compared to what would have happened at the end of the last ice age. But at that time, people described seeing these plasma configurations sort of aurora borealis or northern lights on steroids, if you would, and they form these figures that look sort of like dancing people and animals and donuts in the sky. And this is what you see on the petroglyphs around the world. But corroborating that further is my wife's discovery, Katie Ulysses, that the petroglyphs, those figures are also seen on the Rongo Rongo script of Easter Island. And there we seem to have a real text that's recording what was happening. We have lots of other indications. So it's a Rongo Rongo script, but we also have legends, even biblical legends, about people seeing figures, dancing figures, forms in the sky, which I believe refer to this major solar outburst. We have the Nazca lines, some of the geoglyphs on the Nazca lines mimic these same types of figures. We have even Plato's Atlantis. When you read Plato's Atlantis legend and the destruction of Atlantis about 9600 BC, according to Plato's chronology, this, I believe, also fits right in with what we now know from physical evidence about what was happening at the end of the last ice age. So lots of different lines of evidence to, to support this new view of history. Gebekli Tepe is an archeological site in Turkey, southeastern Turkey, which is now being excavated by Dr. Klaus Schmidt of the German Archeological Institute. It's an incredible site. It would be very exciting just on its own, even if it were only a few thousand years old. It consists of these major stone pillars arranged in circles. Four of them have been excavated fairly completely so far. They're huge monoliths. They're beautifully carved. People often think of Stonehenge when they think of Gebekli Tepe, but Stonehenge pales, in my opinion, compared to Gebekli Tepe because Gebekli Tepe has these huge 
stone circles, circles of monoliths, but they're beautifully carved. They're not rough hewn like Stonehenge. Plus, based on geophysical and other data, there's probably another 20 or so under the ground besides the ones he's excavated. So it's like Stonehenge times 20 or times 22, just a huge site, and the entire site was covered over purposefully. Bef wasn't simply abandoned and left to the winds like many archaeological sites. It was purposefully covered over. Essentially, they built an artificial mountain over it. But what's really exciting to me and why it's caught my interest is the dating of Gebekli Tepe. Gebekli Tepe goes back 11 to 12,000 years. It goes back to the end of the Ice Age. So you've got this incredible sophistication but it's also incredibly old. It doesn't fit in with the standard picture of when civilization was supposed to have begun. Think of Stonehenge again. Stonehenge is maybe 2,500, 3,000 BC by standard attributions. Gobekli Tepe is 9 to 10,000 BC. So if you think about it, Gobekli Tepe was older to the Stonehenge people than Stonehenge was to us. That's how far back it goes. So this is incredible, and it confirms, it corroborates the work I've been doing and have been heavily criticized by some of my academic colleagues for many years, but the work I've been doing on the Great Sphinx and other civilizations around the world where I've found many, many suggestions that civilization goes back to a much earlier period, especially with the weathering on the Sphinx. And this is incredible cooperation that, yes, here we have an independent site showing this level of sophistication and it's well dated, geologically well dated with carbon radioisotope dating, with other forms of dating to this very early. It's very clear to me at this point that we have these ancient civilizations at the end of the last ice age, that there was a demise. In fact, they were catastrophically wiped out, I believe. There, was, there were major catastrophes at the end of the last ice age. The sun was incredibly active at that time over thousands of years since the end of the last ice age essentially settled down, became less active, has been less active or was less active for thousands of years. But in a very real sense, we now have good data that the sun is becoming more active again. So it is ramping up in activity. There are studies that indicate the sun has not been this active for eight to 10,000 years or more as it is in the present day. And we are approaching the levels potentially of the same activity as we saw at the end of the last ice age. So I don't think we should just ignore this data. I'm not a scaremonger. I'm not trying to you know, argue doomsday. But on the other hand, I think we have to pay attention and acknowledge that the sun is becoming more active. The sun is a star. Stars are inherently unstable. They go through cycles on various scales from months to years to decades, like the sunspot cycle, to thousands of years. And there seems to be, in my opinion, a cycle that's on the order of 10,000 plus years. And we are going into a different aspect of this cycle. So I think we have to be careful. We have to pay attention to it. And we have to be prudent and you know, learn from the past. So to me, this is not just sort of a voyeuristic, oh, it's interesting to learn about ancient people. Aren't they sort of silly but interesting? And it's fun to read about the ancient Egyptians or something. No, to me. There are real lessons here. There's real things to learn, and we need to pay attention to that.